I'm Dan Gukin, author of these books on Word, and here's today's Word Tip. I don't care what the tip is. I'm going to fool my friend Peanut. Let's go do it, then. In a recent Word Tip video series, I covered macros. These programs can be assigned to a keyboard shortcut to a degree that the macros keyboard shortcut replaces a traditional Word command. Sneaky. I love it. Let's go, then. I want to do a pop-up window when the user presses Control-S to save a file. Devious. Yes. To create a pop-up window, you use the VBA editor. Click the Developer tab. Now, if you don't see this tab, refer to my earlier Word Tip video. In the Code group, click the Visual Basic button. Don't let this screen frighten you. If you don't see any already created macros or the screen doesn't look quite like this, from the left side, under Normal, choose Modules, and then open the item New Macros. Now, if this trick doesn't work, review my older videos on macros to get on track. Type in a new macro, the fooling macro. At the top of the list of macros, position the cursor, press Enter to have a new blank line, and on the blank line, type Sub, S-U-B, and the name of the macro, fooling, and then a set of empty parentheses. Press Enter. There. Now tab in to indent the instruction. MSG BOX for message box. Then you type the message text in double quotes. Can't save, comma, disk full, end quote, comma. I'm going to add some buttons here, which I didn't do in the earlier videos. So the first button is going to be VB Abort Retry Ignore. It seems official. I'll choose it from the Helper menu, which saves on typing molecules. Double-click to insert. And another comma, the dialog box title, which I will set as a clue that this is a joke. So double-quote, just fooling you, exclamation point, end quote. Click the Save button to save, and mercifully close the VBA editor window thing. The Developer tab is still up. Click the Macros button. There you see the fooling macro. Good! Let's try it out. So click to select the fooling macro. Run. Ha! That's hilarious. It doesn't matter which button you click, they all dismiss the dialog box. Now to assign this macro to a keyboard shortcut, File tab, Options. In the Word Options dialog box, choose Customize Ribbon. Here at the bottom of this window, click the Customize button by Keyboard Shortcuts. In the Customize Keyboard dialog box, choose Macros from the category list on the left and are down there a ways toward the bottom. On the right, you see any macros you've created. Select the Fooling Macro, click the mouse in the text box, press New Keyboard Shortcut, and press on the keyboard Control-S. You see that this keyboard shortcut is already assigned to the file save command. It's an important command, but I'm being devious. <laughs> Go on. Click the Assign button. Close. OK. Time to test our results. I'm going to press Control-S on the keyboard and... Oh, that's great. Yep, joke's on them. I can't wait to try this on Peanut. How did it go? Oh, oh my. Peanut was not amused. You probably want to know how to get things back then. First, understand that only the Control S keyboard shortcut was remapped. Press it to see the pop up. The save icon on the quick access toolbar still works, but Peanut probably doesn't want to hear this info. Nope. File tab, options, customize ribbon. Customize, macros, fooling, select the Control S keyboard shortcut, and then click the Remove button. To confirm that things are back to normal, choose the File tab from the list of categories and scroll down on the right to locate the File Save command. Click it and you see the keyboard shortcuts to save a file, including the weirdo Alt-Shift 
F2. That, I've never used that one. Close. Okay. Now go rush off and fix Peanut's copy of Word and tell him it'll never happen again, at least not before the end of the month. Thanks, Dr. Word.